Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Wednesday, August 28th, 2024. And we have with us again a man of men, the American of the true spirit, heart and soul, Judge Andrew Napolitano. He writes about, talks about, has a great podcast, Judging Freedom, about the thing that you used to call the Constitution and the Bill of Rights that they keep stealing from us. And of course, there's another column coming out tomorrow about that. Judge, thanks for being here. Thank you, Gerald. It's a pleasure, my dear friend. I love these uh, these Wednesday mornings. As do I. And everybody listening and watching, they say it all the time, how great you are and how blessed they are to have you on each week. And, you know, today's the 28th of uh, August. How about September 28th? Wow. Yeah. September 28th will be uh, a great impetus for the pro-peace movement when at the Four Corners of Freedom, uh, right outside where you are now, some very uh, prominent people in the pro-peace movement, you, uh, Scott Ritter, uh, Max Blumenthal, Anya Parampil, yours truly, and others will be speaking nationwide, nationwide, in a rally the likes of which the country hasn't seen. They've seen rallies like this in Europe, but the United States hasn't seen one like this yet. Yes. And thank you so much for doing what you're doing. And, and everybody out there, please try to make it up here. You know, like Scott Ritter said, we need a million people. we got to close down the streets. We have to get the message out. And again, this isn't about us. You know, it's about you. It's about we, we World War Three has begun. I mean, yeah. everybody grow the hell up and, and see what's going on. No, no, no. I, matter of fact, Judge, here, don't subscribe to the Trends Journal for $2.56 a week. Get the Wall Street Journal. For, this is $6 for the weekend edition. Look, look at this big picture here. Lost in 15 minutes. Tragedy in the Mediterranean. This is about some this guy Mike Lynch's yacht sunk, and 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 it's a big story because a rich guy's yacht sank. That's news. Your well, your mother, your father, your sisters, your brothers, friends die. Who gives a shit? Oh no! Yeah. But the yacht sank. In two in Monday's Wall Street Journal, there was a quarter uh, page, quarter of the top of the fold, uh, photograph of a rocket exploding in midair. And the caption said, Israeli uh, Iron Dome shoot down Hezbollah rockets. And it was sunny outside uh, yesterday, meaning Sunday. Isn't it interesting that that confrontation occurred in the dark, not when the sun was out? Huh. Alistair Crook said, I know that photograph. It's a year old. Wow. But the Wall Street Journal put it up there. The New York Times had the exact same photograph, a smaller version of it. That photograph was all over the place, and it was a fraud. And it shows you how mainstream media is in bed uh, with the American uh, elites uh, showing the propaganda that they want. They won't tell you uh, how many missiles and uh, drones got through. If the Israelis had shot down everything as they claim, why did Netanyahu order a total news blackout the minute the, the minute this 20 minute last only for 20 minutes this 20 minute confrontation was over. If the Israelis had shot down every drone and every missile that Hezbollah ordered, wouldn't they be crowing about it? No, he ordered a news blackout. And the Wall Street Journal and mainstream media falls for this stuff. Well, again, they're prostitutes. They're media whores that get paid to put out by their corporate pimps and their government whoremasters. They're prostitutes. And you call it the elite. You mean the rich that tell them what to do? Yes. What elite? Oh, they don't pee or poo. They're elite. Well, in their own minds, they're elite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and again, yeah, this is the Wall Street Journal. This is, um, let's see, yesterday. Look at that picture. Tennis queen opens her title defense. What the hell do I care about this crap? Oh, this is $5 every day. So anyway, they, they, they're not giving us the information. When we say World War III has started, it's begun. And if we don't stop it, it's going to be hell on earth. 
You go to the Trends Journal, Judge. Go back a year, over a year. We have been warning that Ukraine is going to attack Russian nuclear power plants. Exactly What's the what happened. Now? They hit the one in Kursk. Right. And and the UN is saying, uh, not the UN, the the, uh, the the Atomic Energy Commission, whatever the hell they call it, is saying this is very serious. Yeah. Out of the news. Yeah. It's out of the news. They're going to ramp up this war. And Netanyahu, uh, you were telling me before we went on the air of um, what you were reading in Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper. In the Israeli newspaper of uh, Sunday, four days ago, uh, is an op-ed by retired IDF Major General Yitzhak Barik, who said, quote, Israel will collapse in a year. Quote, Netanyahu has decided to die with the Philistines. Quote, he has lost his humanity, morality, norms, values, sense of responsibility. This was backed up by Ronan Barr, who is the incumbent chief of Shin Bet. Shin Bet is like their NSA, their domestic spying, who accused Netanyahu's government of fomenting Jewish terror in the West Bank. Israel is in a very, very uh, bad state of affairs. Oh, coinciding with this on, on uh, Monday morning was the 500th flight of a plane from the United States to Israel, bringing military equipment, 500 flights in the nine months of this genocidal war that we have paid for. And going back to um, what you, that he said about Netanyahu uh, and about Israel going out, you know, about the Samson option. If Israel loses, they go nuclear. And you could, everybody could look it up, S-A-M-S-O-N, Samson option. And also, uh, how many people did they kill in the West Bank uh, yesterday? They killed nine uh, civilians uh, yesterday. And then you told me that they killed 40 some odd civilians uh, in Gaza. These numbers cease to shock yeah. because they come day after day after day. They still shock in the Middle East where all of it uh, is viewable on their iPhones. We don't uh, see it in the West and yet unless you, you know how to dig for it and where to find it. But it ceases to shock over here. So 41 killed in, in Gaza, uh, several in, in the West Bank, which they have no right being in, in violation of the Geneva Convention and Article 242 of the uh, United Nations. But they steal the land and they keep stealing more. And again, nothing about this in the New York Times. I call They call themselves the paper record. I call it the toilet paper record. Or the wall, this is today's Wall Street Journal headline. Israel rescues hostage in Gaza. Oh, oh, big, big deal. You re rescued a hostage? How about all the hostages that Israel has taken and thrown into jail that they're, that they're raping, sexually abusing? Oh, that's fine. Israel could kill who they want rape who they want, steal what they want, but one hostage, oh my God, oh, how wonderful, this is news. This is not news, it's propaganda. And that's all they're selling us. Well, Israel is losing the propaganda war in the United States uh, and around the world because the world is now seeing through uh, Netanyahu's genocidal uh, mania. No, no, uh, no question about it. And you talk about those hostages. There's 10,000 of them. Yep. More or less. And <laughs> um, there's legislation in the Knesset offered by Netanyahu's party to allow their summary execution in order to create more beds for new hostages. Yep. Summary execution without charges, without trial, without lawyers, without conviction, without appeal. What and kind of a country does this israel and you what are we paying for israel yep and you were talking about the beds and you told yeah i remember one of their interviews you said these aren't beds in these with the palestinians are in these jails whether whether you said they're they're sleeping on the floor right they're they're sleeping on a, a steel mesh which could be considered a bed if you put a mattress on it they are spread-eagled and chained 
to the mesh. They are blindfolded and have a diaper on them. So they relieve themselves right there in the diaper uh, and they are fed liquid uh, through a straw. And occasionally they're taken out and raped and the rapes are filmed. In one case, the rapes were broadcast on uh, Israeli television. And then Netanyahu's government hasn't passed yet, introduced legislation in the Israeli parliament, the Knesset, uh, to immunize the rapists. <laughs> And you know, it you know the uh, it, it's just so terrible. And again, if you talk about this like we are, they they accuse you of being an anti-Semite, right? Right. <laughs> you know that guy uh, who who who's uh, Kamala Harris's husband went to DNC. And what's his name? Elmoff, Elmoff, uh, Dom, Doug Emhoff, Emhoff, yeah, Jerkoff, Emhoff. <laughs> anyway, he kept bragging about how proud he is to be Jewish. We don't brag, hey, I'm proud to be an Italian. I'm proud to be an American. I don't want to hear what, what you're proud to be. This is your, how about being proud to be an American? It's the uh, world we're in uh, today. And the government gets away with all of this stuff. And that's what your article is, Searching for Monsters. This article comes out tomorrow. And again, everybody that wants to know what's going on, the people that Judge Napolitano has on judging freedom, like nowhere else. No, who are you going to have on today, Judge? At 11 o'clock uh, this morning, Colonel Douglas McGregor. All right. At 3 this afternoon, Phil Giraldi. Oh. At 4 this afternoon, Scott Ritter. This is like uh, the New York Yankees murderer's row in uh, 1927. Yep. So you want to go to judging freedom. And your article, again, no different what's going on in, 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 in Israel. It's going on here. Searching for monsters. America goes not abroad in search of monsters to destroy. She might become the dictatress of the world but she would no longer be the ruler of her own spirit. John Quincy Adams. Adams uh, warned against what, of course, we now do, which is searching the world for monsters to destroy, whether they're going to kidnap a, a Mexican doctor from his office in Mexico City because they think he's overprescribing <laughs> uh, drugs, whether they're going to murder uh, an Iranian uh, general who's in Iraq to discuss peace, whether they're going to obliterate um, Anwar al-Awlaki and his son, uh, both Americans, sitting in a cafe in Yemen. Presidents get away with searching for monsters to destroy. In the case of the doctor, they violently kidnapped him and brought him to trial in America claiming that by overprescribing drugs in Mexico, he had violated American law. The doctor said, I was kidnapped. Supreme Court said, well, we don't care how you got here. You're here now. And how did they kidnap him? They bribed the local police. You go on and say, the United States has just fought Britain to a draw in the War, in the war of 1812 was fought almost entirely in Canada. Some historians believe British began this war to win back the former colonies. Some believe the U.S. began to seize Canada from Britain. Adams was worried that the cancer of war was spreading yet again throughout the Washington establishment and wanted to squelch it. And I just want to mention that the Washington establishment and he wanted to squelch it. George Washington said, quote, it is our true policy to steer clear of permanent alliance with any portion of the foreign world. Observe good faith and justice toward all nations. Cultivate peace and harmony with all. Screw you. Who the hell are you talking to? Well, that... you, got, you got all these warmongers in America. The hell with George Washington. I mean that advice, of course, has not not been followed at all. It's hard to time. It's hard to find a time in American history when we weren't at war with someone. That's impossible from the post World War II era 
to the present. There is no time when we haven't been fighting a war somewhere on the planet. We have um, 903 military bases in 80 different countries. Huh. The strongest air force in the world is the Chinese. The largest and best army in the world is the Russian. And yet our Defense Department budget is bigger than Russia, China, and the next eight countries combined. See, this is why you tune in. The facts that the judge puts out here are, it's, it's, they're factual and horrific. And again, there's another one too. China has the largest Navy as well. Yes, yes. And the country's rotting in front of our eyes. There's an article in this week's Trends Journal about Amtrak and oh. how, how antiquated it is. Yeah. And, and crap, the bridges, the roads, the rail rotting in front of our eyes as America keeps sending more, more weapons abroad to keep slaughtering people in Gaza, keep the Ukraine war going, bloodying the killing fields, building up the military industrial complex as our nation's rotting before our eyes. Judge, your article over here, you're, you're, what we're really talking about here is about how the fast forward to 1992, when the U.S. was waging another fruitless foreign war, this one using the CIA and the DEA. Explain more about this. This is what I uh, just talked about. This is a war against the Mexican government and against Mexican civilians. The DEA is the Drug Enforcement Administration, and they and the CIA put together a small army to kidnap uh, Mexicans uh, for uh, distributing drugs in Mexico. Uh, foremost among them was a Mexican physician who was violently removed from his office while he was tending uh, to patients. His appeal pre-trial about whether or not the kidnap was lawful went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said, we don't care how you got here. You're here now, so stand trial. Besides, this is really twisted, really twisted. The extradition treaty between Mexico and the United States is silent on kidnapping. Therefore, it's condoned. Oh. You said recent congressional... The Supreme Court effectively became part of the prosecution in this case. Ah, Supreme Court. That's another oxymoron. Nothing supreme about this court. A bunch of little clowns. You write, recent congressional legislation expands the authority of federal courts to cover crimes committed by foreign persons in foreign countries against foreign victims or property. But, but you, you see, you call recent congressional legislation. What legislation? This isn't legislation. This is, this is a, these are acts of crime. I mean, I, I wrote the article because Joe Biden teaming up with tough guy Republicans in the Congress is responsible for this, telling federal courts they must hear these cases. If we kidnap a foreigner off a foreign street because what the foreigner did in a foreign country, even though it didn't harm an American person or American property, there's no American victim, and we bring him in your courtroom and say that if he had done it in America, it would have been an American crime, you have to try the case. That's yeah. what the legislation says. I'm waiting for a federal court to invalidate that legislation, but I'm probably waiting in vain. Yep. You know, it's freedom's been, you know, they, we, the cover of this week's Trends Journal, and it really says it all. We, we saw Harris, you know, she was selling freedom uh, at, at the uh, DNC rally. And, um, and uh, while well, we say, while well, she's spreading freedom as a political gang, kills freedom mm -hmm. and that's the absolute truth they've robbed freedom from us and they keep stealing it and the people keep not fighting against it and we're doing everything we can to bring peace and freedom back to this country and again it was a great man you've mentioned um, over here john quincy adams well samuel adams said it does not take a majority to prevail but rather an irate tireless minority keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men that, that's the american uh, revolution yep 
It was only about one third of the colonists were in favor of revolution. One third wanted to stay with the king. Hard to believe. One third had no opinion, but whatever. Sam Adams was right. The brush fires of freedom soon lit all over the land and revolution became, by the end of the war, became very popular. And that's what we're doing on September 28th. We're lighting those brush fires of freedom. We're doing everything we can to make this happen. So we need your support. Go to OccupyPeace.com, OccupyPeace.com for more information. And please donate what you can. You know, Judge, if the billionaires gave us a billion dollars for peace, we'd have it tomorrow. Yes. We'd have it tomorrow. Yes, but those billionaires are well invested uh, in war. Well invested in war. Yep. Hallibur Halliburton stock goes through the roof. Yep. You just, that's a fact. It just, it just came out. Yep. All, all of the, yeah, it's, it's in your magazine, the Trends Journal. We've been writing about this. So, Judge, thanks for being on. And everybody, remember, go to Judging Freedom because the judge is nobody, nobody anywhere, any place in America that knows the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, the legality and illegality, what's going on better than the judge. Thank you, Judge, for being here. Thank you, Gerald. All the best, my friend.